Dear brothers and sisters, in a hadith that's narrated in the Muwatta of Imam Malik rahimahullah ta'ala, Safwan ibn Sulaym radiallahu anhu says, qala qila li Rasulillahi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, ayakunu al-mu'minu jabanan? The Prophet sallallahu was asked, can a Muslim be a coward? Can a believer be a coward? We know that it's not a good trait, cowardice is not a good trait, but is it possible that a person could be a believer but they suffer from the quality of being cowardly. And the Prophet ﷺ said, Naam, yes. فَقِيلَ لَهُ أَيَكُونُ الْمُؤْمِنُ بَخِيلًا Is it possible that a believer could be a stingy person? Obviously, stinginess is not a good trait, but at the same time, is it possible that a person could be a mu'min, a believer, but they're struggling with the quality of miserliness, of being stingy? So the Prophet ﷺ said, Naam. He said, Yes. فَقِيلَ لَهُ أَيَكُونُ الْمُؤْمِنُ كَذَّابًا Is it possible that a mu'min could be a liar? The Prophet ﷺ said, No. Now, another narration from Umar anhu in Ibn Abi Dunya that's authentically narrated to him. He said, لَا تَجِدُ الْمُؤْمِنَ كَذَّابًا You will not find that a believer could ever be a liar. In another narration from Sa'd ibn Abi Waqas radiallahu ta'ala anhu, and still last one I'll share, there are multiple ones, which is authentically traced to him, where he says, يُطْبَعُ الْمُؤْمِنُ عَلَىٰ كُلِّ خِلَّةِ غَيْرَ الْخِيَانَةِ وَالْكَذِبِ That a believer may sometimes be afflicted with having every type of trait except for two, khiyana, betrayal, and lying, al-kadhib. That these are traits that a believer just cannot have. Now, Obviously, if you read this narration or you read these ahadith by themselves, right, the obvious benefit of it is that lying is extremely serious and looked down upon in our deen. That it is impossible to maintain faith, to maintain iman, and to be a liar at the same time. And there's a difference between someone that falls into a lie here or there and someone who habitually lies. Lying becomes an addiction. That's why you have the phrase compulsive liar. It works out for you once or twice, three times, four times, and then you realize that you're able to cut corners with lying, and so you start to lie in order to get past certain things, in order to cover up certain things, in order to attain benefits that otherwise do not belong to you, for all types of reasoning, right? There's lying in your career, lying in your contracts, lying in your business, lying to your family, covering up infidelity, covering up a sin. All types of lies exist, but the point is that the Prophet ﷺ is saying there is no way a mu'min, a believer, could be a kathab, could be a liar. It doesn't work. And subhanAllah, the traits that are chosen in this narration, Allahumma inni a'udhu bika min al-jubni wal-bukhl. Oh Allah, I seek refuge in you from being cowardly and from being miserly, from being stingy. These are not traits that are looked upon as minor things. They're things that we seek refuge in Allah from. But at the same time, even those two traits do not take a person to a point spiritually where their belief would, would almost, you know, would not be able to coexist with that, uh, with that trait in particular. And there are you know, a few reasons that the scholars mentioned for this. For one, all of the traits of the hypocrites go back to lying. And there is al-kadhib bil-qawl wal-kadhib bil-fi'l. As the scholars say, there is lying with your words and there is lying with your deeds. Portraying something that's not true of yourself and living a double life, right? Lying with your deeds and lying with your words. The munafiqoon, every time Allah talks about the hypocrites in the Qur'an, he mentions lying as a necessary trait of hypocrisy. Why? Because the hypocrites took living a double life to its most extreme manifestation. They portrayed themselves to be believers in public and they were the complete opposite of that in private. And they used that portrayal of belief to take advantage of the believers and to harm the Muslim community. That's the ex most extreme manifestation of lying, the most extreme manifestation of hypocrisy. However, obviously we don't always get there. And may Allah protect us from that. And just like with any other trait of hypocrisy, you want to remove that trait of hypocrisy so that the traits of hypocrisy do not become combined in you to where you could be taken to a place that you never thought that you would be taken to. 
the hadith of the Prophet وسلم, where he mentioned the traits of the hypocrites. If he speaks, he lies. If he makes a promise, he breaks that promise. If he is entrusted with something, he violates that trust, right? Those, those three things are all just forms of lying. The, the breaking of a promise is a lie that has an attached to a pro, that is attached now to a promise. The violating of a trust, someone trusted you with something that was valuable, with a secret, or with some sort of, of, of contract, or a conversation that you would not share, but you violated that as well. So it is again a lie that is attached to something more severe. The breaking of an oath in another narration, إِذَا خَاصَمَ fajr, a person who becomes you know, uh, belligerent when they become, uh, when, when they get into an argument. All of these go back to this trait of lying. And that's why Ibn Umar ta'ala explains that lying is the foundation of every one of these diseases in terms of the interactions with people. And the Prophet Sallallahu explained it as such. He said, alayhi salatu was salam, alaykum bis-sidq. Upon you is to be people of truthfulness. Alaykum bis-sidq. Fa'inna sidqa yahdi ila al-birr. When a person is truthful, truthfulness leads to all forms of good deeds. When a person is a truthful person, when they are sincere and truthful, that is going to open the doors to all types of good things. They're going to be honest in their dealings with their family, honest in their dealings with their community, honest in their dealings with their business, honest with, with themselves when they are confronted with a situation where they know they should act in a certain way. Truthfulness, sidq, fil qawl wal amal. It opens the door to all forms of obedience, all forms of good, all of the things that are praiseworthy in a person's life. It opens those doors. And the Prophet ﷺ said, وَإِنَّ الْبِرَّ يَهْدِي إِلَى الْجَنَّةِ And birr, righteousness, leads to paradise. And he says, وَإِنَّ الرَّجُلَ لَيَسْتُقْ A person will continue to be truthful. حَتَّى يُكْتَبَ عِنْدَ اللَّهِ صِدِّيقًا Until they're written with Allah as a Siddiq, as a person of truth. The loftiest title after a Prophet is to be a person of truth. Truthful with their words, truthful with their deeds, you know what you're getting when you're dealing with that person, right? This is how we would define a person who is sadiq, sadiq, in terms of our, our, our dealings with them. You know what you're getting when you're dealing with that person. There is, they're not speaking out of two sides of their mouth. There is no betrayal of their deeds and their words. There is a consistency there. Likewise, when that person stands before Allah, there's a transparency, there's a truthfulness with Allah. So that's... That's a title that you want to have with Allah. May Allah write us from a Siddiqeen. Allahumma ameen. May Allah write us amongst the truthful. Then he said, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, wa al-kadib. Beware of lying. فَإِنَّ الْكَذِبَ كَذِبَ يَهْدِي إِلَى الْفُجُورِ Lying opens the door to every form of violation and transgression. Everything that is sacred will be violated. وَإِنَّ الْفُجَّارَ لَفِي جَحِيمٍ Right? Allah Azza wa Jal even mentions it. People that violate a, a, a fajr is someone that acts out of line. So you're going to violate one after the other, your contract with your Lord and your contract with the people. Why? Because one thing will open another thing. If you're able to get away with one form of lying, a little lie will lead to a big lie. A lie that worked here, you'll try to impose it here. You'll try to use it to your advantage here. You'll, you'll, you'll get yourself in a really sticky situation. And in order to get out that situation, you'll tell yourself, let me lie to get out of this situation. And for whatever reason, you're able to successfully lie and get out of that situation. So what do you do now? You keep lying. The situation is getting bigger. The lying is getting more consistent. You, you get used to, accustomed to a life of hypocrisy, to a life of double standards. By the way, this is one of the most dangerous things that could happen to a believer, to a person, psychologically. You get used to living your life with a separation of values, right? That, you, that, that you're, you're only this Muslim in this environment, in this context. You're only this compliant with the way of Allah and the Prophet ﷺ in this place. And you get used to that disconnect. You get used to, that, used to living with those, not, not just double standards, multiple right, standards for yourself. And then at some point, you don't even feel guilty anymore. It, it becomes so easy for you to do. You know, they say that one of the things about a compulsive liar is that eventually they'll wrap themselves up into a nut that they can't get out of because they'll forget the lie that they told last week. They've told so many lies in the last year 
They forget the one that they told you the year before. And so they get themselves caught up into a bind they can't get out of. So the Prophet is saying, al kadib yahdi al fujur it opens up doors of disobedience, doors of sin, doors of transgression that you're not going to really be able to stop yourself. Lie to your wife once, it'll become a habit. You know, lie to your family once, it'll become a habit. Lie to your community, lie in your business, lie in your work, lie in this, lie in that. It's going to become a habit. So the Prophet said, a person will continue to do so. Hatta yuktaba indallahi kadhaba. A person will continue to lie until they're written with Allah as a kadhab, as a liar. That's a horrible thing you want to be written with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala as. May Allah protect us from being amongst them. Allahumma ameen. And Aisha radiallahu anha, she said, it's a powerful hadith. مَا كَانَ خُلُقٌ أَبْغَضَ إِلَىٰ رَسُولِ اللَّهِ صَلَى اللَّهُ عَلَيْهِ وَسَلَمْ مِنَ الْكَذِبِ The Prophet sallallahu did not hate a quality in a person more than he hated lying. You know, we say, وَإِنَّكَ لَعَلَىٰ خُلُقٍ عَظِيمٍ The Prophet sallallahu is on an exalted standard of character. And we're trying to celebrate him, and we're trying to be like him, and we're talking about his characteristics. Aisha radiallahu anha said the most despised thing to him was lying. وَلَقَدْ كَانَ رَجُلُ يُحَدِّثُ عِنْدِ النَّبِيِّ صلى الله عليه وسلم بالكذبة. And a person would, would be sitting with the Prophet وسلم, and they'd, they'd let a lie slip. And she says, فَمَا يَزَالُ فِي نَفْسِهِ حَتَّى يَعْلَمَ أَنَّهُ قَدْ أَحْدَثَ مِنْهَا تَوْبَةً it, would, it wouldn't sit well with the Prophet وسلم. You know, Prophet وسلم, would not always challenge it there. Sometimes the Prophet وسلم, knew. He, I mean, he had hypocrites around him, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam in, in, in Medina, right? There were hypocrites there. The Prophet وسلم, knew what was happening around him. Allah, you know, divinely guides him when to speak and when not to speak. But the Prophet وسلم, would know someone just told a lie. And it, it's so nasty to him, it's so despicable to him. It doesn't, it stays inside of him. So Aisha radiallahu anha said the Prophet وسلم, would not be satisfied until he knew that that person repented from their lie. It would stay with him, it would bother him Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam when you lied in his presence until he knew that you repented from that lie. Now someone is saying, well Alhamdulillah, none of that is me. So here's what I want to focus on just for a moment. This is why we hold ourselves to higher standards. There are many things that we might do that are borderline kathib or they're kathib and we're just not paying attention to it. Because we know of greater kathib. <laughs> People that do much worse than us, right? People that tell much greater lies, much more consequential lies. And so, is it a lie if I misrepresent an interaction when I'm talking to someone else? I didn't completely make it up or hide it. I just misrepresented it a bit. Well, at what point am I just going to lie and say an inter interaction never happened? Is it really a lie if I change the words a bit, if I misrepresent the mood of the conversation? Is it a lie in, you know, in, in the case that, what if I was dealing with a child, with a kid? Right? And subhanAllah, you find in this uh, chapter in Abu Dawood, Bab fi tashdidi fil kadib, the chapter of the severity of, of how, you know, how the Prophet وسلم, would, would not let these things go. And it's a narration from Abdullah ibn Amr radiallahu ta'ala anhu. Qala da'atni ummi yawman wa Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam qa'idun fi baytina that my mother once called me and the Prophet وسلم, was sitting in our house. Faqalat ha ta'al u'tik. She said, come, come, I have something to give you. Right? She's calling him from a room or something like that. So just a mother calling her child. فَقَالَ لَهَا رَسُولُ اللَّهِ صَلَىٰهِ وَسَلَمْ وَمَا أَرَدْتِ أَن تُعْطِيهِ What is it that you plan to give him? So she said, أُعْطِيهِ uh, تَمْرَىٰ I'm going to give him a date. The Prophet ﷺ said to her, أَمَا إِنَّكِ لَوْ لَمْ تُعْطِيهِ شَيْئًا كُتِبَتْ عَلَيْكِ كِذْبًا he said, if you were lying to your child when you said, come, I have something to give you, and you weren't going to give him anything, a lie would be written against you. Even when you're dealing with children, don't teach your children hypocrisy. Don't teach your children these things from a young age. Don't, that, that messaging is there. Don't teach them that double standard. No. So the Prophet is saying, even when you call your child, be truthful to your children. Be honest with your child. Don't betray the words that you are giving to your children. And of course, there are multiple things that, though they applied specifically to that society, there's a benefit. The Prophet ﷺ, when he says, uh, May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala curse the one who took an a'ma an sabil who misguided a blind person from the path. You know, kids used to play around at the time, and they'd see someone that couldn't see, and he's looking for help, and they take him and place him on another path. The Prophet ﷺ said, May Allah curse that person. It's not okay. 
What would that apply to us now? Someone that is looking for help, someone that's in trouble, and you say, yeah, go that way, over there. You misguide someone that's in need. Someone needs you and you say, all right, call me tomorrow. And you know you have no intention of answering the phone when they call you tomorrow. Someone says, you know, okay, if you can't get the help there, I'll help you here. These are, these are things that we can still apply ethically to ourselves and challenge ourselves with. If Ibrahim alayhi salam on the day of judgment, Abraham is afraid of his lies that he told, which are not actually lies. Who are we to say, alhamdulillah, you know, I don't check any of these boxes. Multiple narrations. Ibn Abbas radiallahu ta'ala anhuma, when he says about the ayah, يَعْلَمُ خَائِنَةَ الْعَيْنِ مَا تُخْفِ الصُّدُورِ Allah knows the betrayal of the eyes and what the hearts conceal. He said, you know what khianat al-a'yun is? The uh, khanat al-a'yun, the, the, the betrayal of the eyes. He said, a woman walks by, mashallah, you lower your gaze. As soon as she can't tell if you're looking or not, you stare. Right? So you, you gave her the impression that you were lowering your gaze and being respectful. But once you saw an opening, you stare. Think about that, what that means for us in technology. You show someone respect in person, then you pull out your phone five minutes later. <laughs> what happened there? You're not showing the, your true intentions. You're not revealing your true intentions with a person. <laughs> Be ethical with people. Don't give them a face in front of them and then a face when they can't see you anymore. Even that, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is telling us to be careful. The Prophet is saying, woe to the person who jokes to make, who lies when they, when they joke, to make other people laugh. The Prophet is saying, no one should take the belongings of his brother. Hazan ojada. You know, you make someone think that they're, they're, something's been taken away from them. As a joke even, the Prophet is saying not to jump out at someone. These are all forms of... Of, of, of transgression that the Prophet ﷺ is telling us to be careful with. And a person would say, you know, it's just, that's hard, that's okay. Perfect standards are meant to be hard. <laughs> it's meant to be hard. It's, there literally should be something in there to challenge each and every single one of us. That's the point of having a perfect messenger wasallam. I can do better. You know, maybe I let things slide. Maybe I got a little bit too comfortable here. Maybe I, maybe I went too far with this. And if anything else, it's enough of a lie or enough of a share of lies that a person would have on their record that they repeat everything that they hear. That they repeat everything that they hear. I heard this sheikh say this about this sheikh. I heard, I saw this WhatsApp message about this. I saw this and you repeat it. Prophet ﷺ is saying, that's enough of a share of lies for you on the Day of Judgment, just to repeat everything without verifying anything anymore. Be careful what you spread. Be careful what you repeat without doing your own verification. Do your own verification. Do your own homework. And actually, ask yourself if it's even worth studying, because some things I don't even need to know in the first place. It's none of my business. Why would I even go and dig into this? I don't need this. But that's enough of a share of kadib for a person to have. Now someone might ask, well, what about the hadith about the good lies? <laughs> lying, permissible lying. Messenger said, لَيْسَ الْكَذَّابُ الَّذِي يُصْلِحُ بَيْنَ النَّاسِ وَيَقُولُ خَيْرَ وَيَنْمِي خَيْرَ Prophet said, a person is not a liar when they're trying to bring people together and they want good for the community. SubhanAllah, in our deen, you're forbidden from quoting someone's words to another person if it's going to take them apart from each other. You're going to cause fitna. You're going to cause you know, fire between two people by saying, hey, you heard what this person said about you? But the Prophet ﷺ is saying, look, naturally when you're trying to bring people together, if any of you have ever tried to reconcile between two people, you know, you've got to kind of exaggerate when you're talking to the other person about how, saying, you know, I think that person really loves you. I, they, I heard they said this about you, right? You're trying your best to bring two people together. The Prophet ﷺ is saying, that's not a liar. That's a person who's trying to do good. That's a person who's trying to bring people together. And so the three things the Prophet ﷺ mentioned, al-harb, in war, wal-islahu bayna nas and bringing people together. وَحَدِيثُ الرَّجُلِ امْرَأَتَهُ وَحَدِيثُ الْمَرْأَةِ زَوْجَهَا And the way that a husband talks to his wife or a wife talks to her husband. Now by the way, that doesn't mean you can lie to your spouse about where you were last night. Or you can lie to your spouse about what's really on, when they say, hey, who is, you know, who, who are you, you can't lie to your spouse that way. 
That means that you speak and you exaggerate in your praise of your spouse. You exaggerate when you're speaking sweetly and nicely to your spouse. You say good things to your spouse. You, you, you bring joy to your relationship, right? You, you overpraise. You, that's how a good marriage is going to function. So the Prophet is saying that mujamala, that type of beautifying a relationship, the discussion between a husband and a wife, that that's something that's praiseworthy to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And by the way, some of the scholars, just for the lack of time, I'm not going to go into detail, but they said even here, the Prophet was not talking about kadib sariah. He wasn't talking about outright making things up, but he was talking about exaggerating or concealing certain things. So for example, you know, brother so-and-so, you're trying to bring two brothers together. Brother so-and-so said, you know, that person is a jerk, but I really love them. You just convey the I really love them part. <laughs> it's not kadib sarih. It's not, you're not lying, but you're saying, you know, I heard him say he really loves you. He does love you. He does, he does, he does miss you. He does miss that friendship. So it's not even kadib sarih. It's not just making something up outright. And the opposite end of that, by the way, is do not show cruelty to your spouse in the name of honesty. Why did you tell her that? I, I'm a direct person. You know, I had to tell her that. I had to be real with her. You know, so you say something super cruel to your spouse, demeaning. That's how I feel. This isn't in the, in the name of communication and counseling and building and being honest and transparent and trying to work through real problems. But I had to say it because that's how I felt. That's not sunnah. It's not the deen. Self-control is the deen. When you, holding your tongue until you have something good to say is the deen. Right? So there's no cruelty in the name of honesty. Likewise, when it comes to, to quoting people's words to each other, you know, there's no, there's no starting fires in the name of loyalty. Like, hey, I, I had to tell you that he said this about you because you, know, you know who we are. You know our friendship. You know, I've got your back. No, you don't. If you had his back, you would have stopped the person when they were backbiting him, not quoted his words to that person and start a, a fire between them. You would have defended him behind his back not started a fire and said, it's in the name of loyalty and that's just who I am. So SubhanAllah, even then, there are ethics and there are goals in the way that we speak. But as we're talking about getting close to the Prophet Sallallahu may Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala make us amongst those that are closest to him in character in this life and in love of him in this life and in closeness to him in the hereafter and in Jannah al Firdaus. Allahumma Ameen. As we're talking about that, scrutinize the most hated characteristic to him the most hated characteristic to him, and make sure you don't even have a share of it in your life. May Allah protect us from it in our dealings, in our business, in our family, in our personal relationships, in our community relationship. May Allah protect us from al kadib in every way. And may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala write us from as siddiqeen Allahumma ameen. Aqulu qawli hadha wa astaghfirullah wa rakam wa isa'ul muslimin fa astaghfiru innahu al-ghafur rahim.